<clears throat> yes sir so <coughs> it seems i am ready and yes sir yes sir yes sir yes madan lal ji yes thank yes. you so much thank you so much let's we start sir yes if you like uh yes sir show sure. so in this uh, four session uh, dr ds kulshetra is with us uh, for the new uh, lecture string theory a theory of quantum gravity on one dimensional objects hand over to you sir okay thank you thank you dr madan lal ji thank you so much uh, thank you sir thank you so much for your very kind introduction for your very kind words and now uh, once again we all of us are together and i uh, like to extend my very very sincere thanks to all the participants participants uh, and the audience in the very first place and then i of course also am very grateful to the organizers uh, all of you uh, madan lal ji divya ji and uh, professor sanjay pant ji You, everything takes time and energy to organize and to do and to sit on the lectures and and uh, and communicate with each other so uh, you see i i'm very very happy about it and i'm very happy that people i mean the kind of questions that i am getting uh, encourages me to uh, to speak further right so um, actually the main purpose of my talk would be to generate enthusiasm among the younger generation you see that is the main purpose uh, as a teacher uh, i'm i'm somehow uh, people my students tell me sir you are a, they they love me so um, uh, i'm not so much of a researcher i'm more of a teacher as you might notice in conversation with me i i i want to be a good teacher only and of course for that i have to be a student also a good student so i try to be good at both the things okay so in our next talk uh, this is uh, again um, looking for a theory of quantum gravity so here uh, we talk about super string theory string theory and super string theory we we will we will go into the details of this but uh, before that uh, uh, as a part of continuation of my earlier talk and the topics are of course the common and uh, so the motivations and uh, motivations and uh, ideas are, are quite common they need to be developed further and before that so you see when we talk about we we did we need to realize two things that field theory or quantum field theory is a very very fundamental subject and general relativity gravity theory is also a very fundamental subject but as i said that this is a kind of generalization of the field theory curved space time manifold so the, now let me emphasize that you see if you generalize quantum mechanics to three space one time dimensions okay then or you go back from conventional field theory to um, so quantum mechanics is a kind of field theory in just zero space and one time dimension so that is quantum mechanics okay so now and if you write it in general in in uh, curved space time you get uh, gravity theory you you get uh, yes gravity theory and if you introduce supersymmetry into the theory you get supersymmetric field theory which is a, uh, summarized in stand, supersymmetric standard model if you introduce further you have uh, generalized it further so supergravity theory and so on now we make one more generalization then that would be string theory or super string theory so it's all these are different manifestations of the same idea same same idea uh, which is uh, field theory which goes from one end to the other other end okay and here uh, as we talk about gravity also and the quantum theory also the fundamental 
idea of both the theory. Uh, I feel uh, I have the temptation of telling you some very important uh, the so-called things that are being talked about in the in the among the scientists. So the, uh, let me start with this guy called Carl Jagan. Uh, he was born around 1934. And uh, he lived for about 62 years, but he's a very, very celebrated American planetary scientist who wrote many, many papers and many, many books. One of the very celebrated book is Cosmos, by the title Cosmos. And he, he had the courage or to... You see, most of the scientists that I, I meet, uh, I'm talking of people outside our country, they all believe and respect our ancient Indian thought. I don't want to associate any religion to any of these things, but ancient Indian thought, ancient Indian literature. And in that, Karl Jagan appreciates. He explicitly says there were, uh, yesterday I, I looked into Google to verify things that uh, people are so, were so curious. Did he really say this? Yes, he said this. So in the in one of the Quora, the uh, the expert says yes, he did say it. So he said that this ancient Hindu thought or the ancient Indian thought, let me put it more general, is dedicated to the idea that cosmos indeed go through an immense infinite series of deaths and rebirths. This is one thing he said, which is very important. And uh, he also said that in the ancient Indian thought, we talk about the time scales that are somehow consistent with the modern cosmological scientific time scales. For example, as I said, the universe was born 13.7 billion years ago. Now, we have our ordinary day and night. Uh, all of us feel it, what it is. And then, uh, our ancient Indian thought also talks about the time scales of Brahma, the creator. And so, uh, uh, one day and night of Brahma would then, in the, in the ancient Indian thought, would correspond to something like half of the time when the uh, Big Bang took place. So let, let us say seven to eight uh, billion years or so. One day and night of Brahma, you see. And compare this. So they are cosmological time scales. They are, we do, I mean, ancient Indian thought. The, the, the Rishi Munis, the, the scholars, we are now trying to do these things. We are also in the same category, but they were uh, very um, celebrated names. So they did also, uh, I mean, they were aware of these cosmological, modern, the concepts that are consistent till, do till today with the modern scientific cosmological uh, scales. Now, this reminds me of, uh, I, I like to say, a few words, uh, please take it only as a part of the ancient Indian thought, okay, and not as a part of any religion. So I like to tell a few things from uh, Bhagavad Gita, my, my favorite book, one of my favorite books. Krishna says, Sarva Bhutani Konte Ya Prakriti Miyanti Mamikam Kalpakchaye Punastani Kalpadau Visra Jammeham. Uh, which translates to, he says, uh, Arjun, all these uh, uh, let me let me explain it in Hindi. Kalpon ke prarambh me me sab bhut praniyon ki rachna karta hu, aur kalpon ke ant me bo punah mujhe hi prapt hote hai. So kalpon is a plural word for kalp. So he refers to multiverse, not only just one universe. This is one important concept. And then he says 
so th this will have several interpretations i would also make a interpretation of this uh, uh, as a path integral which is a transition amplitude from vacuum to vacuum you see we have to know scientific things uh, in consistency with the modern scientific thought so you take the time evolution operator which evolves a quantum state from time t1 to t2 you take its uh, matrix element between some initial and final time and take uh, a square of the absolute uh, modulus value of this this is a transition amplitude this in particular has a name called path integral so these things were developed by the legendary physicists dirac and feynman and and and, uh, and so on so uh, this also uh, the the sloka that i mentioned also explains the path integral which is the vacuum to vacuum one vacuum first vacuum refers to the time t going to minus infinity look at the standard textbooks on quantum field theory time t going to minus infinity is the initial time and time t going to plus infinity is the final time uh, look at bjorkan and drell the celebrated two volumes on field theory he talks about it very clearly then he says prakritim swam vastabhya visrajami punah punah bhut gram memam kratsan vasam prakatir vasat he says that uh, i uh, uh, i i i th th these things i create these things the as i mentioned in the first one according to their pre assigned characteristics now here i would like to remind my younger friends please do look into quantum mechanics uh, in particular my favorite book uh, is modern quantum mechanics by jj sakurai also advanced quantum mechanics by jj sakurai uh, modern quantum mechanics is, is still simpler which we teach in the classroom and look at one dimensional harmonic oscillator what you do is you take a linear combination of x and p and construct the creation and annihilation operators a and a dagger uh, as they are denoted in this book you can call them by any name so now if you apply this the vacuum state in the vacuum state uh, i would tell you little bit later is also defined in in uh, bhagavad gita i may not read the the shloka here but it define in chapter 9 uh, chapter 9 please do look at the first few shlokas and you can look into the translation into your own personal uh, mother tongue whatever we have we have scholars all around india they 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 have done it so uh, many of these concepts and so here now if i have a and these annihilation creation operators if i apply de them to the vacuum state let me say a creation operator to a vacuum state i will create a one particle state if i apply it to a n particle state i will create a n plus one particle state what is this it's not particle is not getting created the eigen value of the quantum state increases by one quantum unit of energy h cross omega but if i have for example field theory uh, a qed theory quantum electrodynamics i have a electron positron photon system i have to write fock space decomposition for each one of them just as i did that x could be a linear sum of a and a dagger px could be a linear sum of a and a dagger here all these creation and annihilation operators be if if i have in supergravity theory too many particles particle content is much larger then each one you can ex expand as a field you can write a field expansion fock space decomposition fock space is when the number operator is diagonal okay capital n so creation operator a dagger annihilation operator a and the product of the two a dagger a is bisnu the preserver this when applied to a n particle state it does not change it remains a n particle state the eigen value does not increase or decrease by any amount but if you apply a, a, a creation operator called brahma then your eigen value decreases by 1 if you apply shiva the the destructor 
destroyer the eigen value goes by one and let me tell you it's not my personal language it's the language you can find in standard textbooks on on quantum mechanics and quantum field theory and but i have met these uh, people john bell and many many celebrated physicists who like this terminology because this is exactly uh, so now if i apply to a vacuum state for example three creation operators one corresponding to electron one to photon one to positron then i would have a three particle state corresponding to one electron one positron one photon this is what is written in this uh this is what this bhagavad gita tells us in this if we understand physics on the one hand and this these thoughts on the other hand you can find out a perfect analogy you see what happened uh, just to tell you a, a small story uh, on this day when uh, our prime minister returned back from south africa and greece to india he went straight away after the moon landing he went straight away to bangalore and talked to the isro scientists the, the scientists like you people to talk to them and he made a so called avahan he said gyan vigyan uh, prachin gyan naya vigyan naya anusandhan that is what he said and then i immediately got some whatsapp message and then the phone from dd news सर आज शाम को आप प्लीज जरूर आ जाइए मना मत करिए हम आपके लिए गाड़ी भेज रहे हैं टाइम पर आई सेट ओके एंड वाट एम आई सपोज टू डू देयर नहीं सर मोदी जी ने जो अभी बोला है यू हैव टू कमेंट ऑन दैट आई सेट ओके आई कम एंड आई डू दिस जॉब देन आई आई सेट दिस स्लोक आज एंड एक्सप्लेन दैम वाट मोदी जी मेंट सो अवर एंशियंट थाट एंड एंशियंट लिटरेचर वी शुड नॉट सिंपली एब एंड डोन दैम इफ A, a best one person tells us this is this, then we, ah, yeah, okay, okay, great. But we should have self confidence. Our our people are full of brains and literature. A lot of these things they they do exist in our literature. We need to realize them. You see, in in uh, this is probably also in uh, chapter nine, is Loka nine. Uh, he says, "Nacha mam tani karmani niban dhanti janan dhananjaya." Krishna says. हे अर्जुन नन ऑफ दिज ये जो कर्म है जो मैंने आई जस्ट नाउ टोल्ड यू दैट इफ यू अप्लाई थ्री डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ क्रिएशन ऑपरेटर्स टू द एन पार्टिकल स्टेट यू इनक्रीज इट टू एन प्लस थ्री पार्टिकल स्टेट वन वन करस्पॉन्डिंग टू दोज थ्री ऑफ दैम बट ही सेज नच माम तानी कर्माणी ये सब मुझे नहीं बांधते हैं मैं इन सब से इन्वेरियंट रहता हूँ i remain i am i am not uh, so this is a dagger into a that is vishnu so he says uh, if you apply a dagger a to any quantum state nothing will happen to the quantum state it would stay just as it is so with these words and uh, telling you, you you please look into some of these things uh, i would i would i would explain to you uh, i i only want to make a reference to what modi ji said but this the bhagavad gita says somewhere in okay also chapter 9 0 1 and 0 2 shloka he says uh, only birds gyanam vigyan sahitam in the next shloka he says raj vidya raj guhiyam what is this that we are going to talk here we are talking here this is the quantum field theory this is raj vidya raj guhiyam this is ye gyan vigyan sahit sab bhasha sab vidyaon ka raja सब हिडन लिटरेचर का राजा दैट इज दिस क्वांटम फील्ड यू यू कैन गो टू क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स यू कैन गो टू फील्ड थ्योर इन वन वन स्पेस वन टाइम टू स्पेस वन टाइम और वट एवर डायमेंशंस यू लाइक यू कैन गो ऑल द वे अप टू सुपर ग्रेविटी यू कैन नाउ गो टू सुपर ग्रेविटी सो दिस इज आई ओनली वॉन्ट टू टेल टू मोटिवेट माई यंगर जनरेशन प्लीज विथ एन ओपन माइंड प्लीज डू लुक एट अवर मैनी ऑफ अवर एंशियंट ओल्ड एन थिंग्स एंड यू फाइंड लॉट ऑफ दीज दीज रिच कॉन्सेप्ट सम वे आर रिटेन इन अवर इन 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 माई अनदर मोस्ट फेवरेट बुक इज रामचरित मानस एंड आई एक्चुअली माई हिंदी यूज टू बी वेरी गुड सो फ्रॉम देयर इफ यू परमिट मी आई रीड ए फ्यू लाइन्स दैट देर इज ए लास्ट 
chapter called Uttarakhand, and there is a dialogue between Kakabusundi and Garud. You have to think of the concept. I personally have spent my lifetime only thinking of the concepts, attacking the concepts, trying to understand them without going into their other other uh, aspects. So he says uh, that. Uh, मोह बिलो कि राम मुसुका ही बेहसत तुरत गये मुख माही उन्होंने मुझे देख कर उनको हंसी आई तो मैंने देखा कि मैं उनके मुख में चला गया ना भाट है पंस उधर माज सुन अंडज राया देखे बहु ब्रह्मांड निगाया उनके पेट के अंदर मैंने बहुत सारे ब्रह्मांड देखे आई एम टेलिंग ओनली द कॉन्सेप्ट अति विचित्रत है लोक अनेक रचना अधिक एकते हैं एक आई आई लीव द अदर लाइन्स Uh, without reading them, but uh, again he says, "Lok lok prati bhinn vidhata." Every system has its own creator. Bhinn Vishnu Shiva Manu Dishitraata. They have different creation operators, different annihilation operators, different preservation operators. So uh, I would not go further into that, but uh, perhaps. Um, Uh, the last line which i would like to quote the the coming to the time scales of relativity ubhay ghari mah main sab dekha do pal ke andar maine ye sab dekh liya bhayau bhramit man moh visekha i apologize to all those who may not have been able to to understand my this thing but i i i i have no english interpretation of this in my mind and we also don't have a time to go into all those so this was just to 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 motivate you little bit further on after all you see uh, leaders they do do matter if i as your teacher tell you a few things you might think after all what dsk said might be sensible let us think about it let us let us look at it so i i believe i am talking sensible things even in my earlier talk and even in the in this talk now let us go so in our Uh, what I have told you is that there are two different ways to include gravity into our understanding of quantum field theory. One of them we already discussed, and it was the super gravity theory, where we stayed all through with zero dimensional particles and fields. We were able to successfully introduce gravity into the theory. For that aim. the price that we paid may be the the beneficial that we introduced more symmetries into the theory we introduced supersymmetry okay we made the the local we made the gauge symmetry to be local symmetry so and then we increased the number of supersymmetries and this really helps us arrive at what our fine eventually aim is or eventually aim was this was our uh, eventual aim to construct the theory theory of quantum gravity which might explain many things beyond uh, our conventional things and uh, this might include gravity into our fold which we wanted to do and this might lead us to a theory of quantum gravity so super gravity is one of the candidate theories of quantum gravity now let us go to talk about another candidate theory of quantum gravity and this is going to be string theory and if we include fermions also so this can be bosonic string theory as well as uh, if we also include fermions you see after all all, all this matter around us we all uh, are made up of these electrons uh, protons and so on this is matter so matter particles these are uh, around us and they are fermionic okay six quark six lepton they are all fermionic okay with spin one half so we cannot live without without uh, without fermions so if you extend bosonic string theory to include also fermions into the fold you naturally end up with uh, with a super string theory and uh, uh, super symmetry is a symmetry which also tells us you can mathematically prove it that number of bosons in a theory is identically equal to the fermions number of fermions in the same theory uh, i would strongly recommend book of my german guru j uh, 
professor harald j w muller chris then he he has written several books on all textbook uh, after all i am his disciple so uh, he lives in darmstadt he was a professor at university of kaiserslautern and uh, after his retirement he lives in darmstadt uh, adjacent to frankfurt and in, in each and every visit of mine i go to meet him and uh, i spend almost a week week with him going out for lunch and uh, dinner and uh, tea and coffee essentially to talk, to be able to talk to him so his most famous book is super symmetry where he gives calculational details calculational and, and conceptual details on super symmetry that is written on the cover page so please do look at it and in the 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 summary of that entire book is that if you talk about super symmetry this is a symmetry with a local no no not local rigid super symmetry or a uh, global super symmetry so so it's not not local super symmetry in and that is true of all all the super symmetric field theories <coughs> so uh, here i would uh, mention to you uh, the the a model called as best jumino model which is the crucial soul of the supersymmetry so best jumino model has a scalar field a pseudo scalar field in its in its contents and the spinner field now uh, for uh, i mean this applies to to all supersymmetric theories there are two different ways one is to go these these scalar fields and so on here we are still talking about zero dimensional particles and fields we will gradually go into because we will need supersymmetry into our string theory uh, so going to one dimensional objects so here this uh, bastubino model uh, talks about a scalar pseudo scalar field and a spinner field uh, here the masses of all these fields have to be same and for a, for super symmetry to be unbroken and the, the couplings also have to be identically the same whatever interaction terms you have product of fields uh, they all will have the same coupling so this is the uh, unbroken super symmetry if you change any of these parameters then super symmetry would be broken uh, and so that is uh, uh, this is this is uh, one point and here in general you can have two kinds of formalism here in this particular model which is the soul of the super symmetry as well as super string theory the <coughs> the super symmetry is a non non manifest super symmetry so you don't see it when you write the x and you say oh, okay there is one klein gordon kind of a field another klein gordon kind of a field with which is under parity goes as minus phi goes to minus phi and spinner field so what is new so you don't see super symmetry anywhere the other formalism is called as the super space formalism where you explicitly introduce the grassmann variables into your theory so you make a every field not only a function of x mu but also a function of x mu into theta theta bar and your volume element goes from integral d for x to also include integrations over d to theta and d to theta bar so so what are their grassmann variable and this is called as super space formalism and here super symmetry is visible just by looking at the field looking at the x and you say oh it's a super symmetric field theory so i would not go into the details of this particular theory at the moment i will come back to the best jumino model with non manifest super symmetry you don't see it anyway so uh, the here the spinner field uh, if you want to talk in terms of a charged uh, fermionic particles then you need to have a dirac spinner but if you like to have a uh, have uh, if you if you impose a condition that the charge conjugate of the spinner is identically equal to the spinner itself then you are talking about real so they they are described in terms of majorana 
fermions majorana is uh, spinners so majorana particles are the particles that are their own anti particles so this is one we would we also don't need to go too much into it but only to get ideas from here that uh, how do we construct that but before coming to west jubino model at all let me first begin my things with the simple uh, string theory okay bosonic string theory so that means i am going a step beyond particle physics so i said the particles and fields we could handle with zero dimensional particles and fields now but in when we talk about zero dimensional particles and fields we have the uncertainty principle which says delta x is h cross by delta p and this works for the zero dimensional particles and fields but i want to include gravity into my theory so this uh, uncertainty principle would in the present form would not be sufficient would not be enough to to take me anywhere and my divergence problems would remain there they would not be solved so what do i want to do now in super gravity theory i stayed with the uncertainty principle as it was but i introduced more symmetries more symmetries super symmetry gauge symmetry everything to make things finite for us okay so results have to be finite you have to be able to make experiment uh, contact with the experimental physics or otherwise it's all useless okay any complicated theory or mathematics it's, it's useless if you cannot make contact with observational physics so now let me uh, propose that i generalize my uncertainty principle to delta x equal to h cross by delta p plus a second term which is alpha prime some constant which is the famous rajai slope in hadron physics so some constant alpha prime times delta p by h cross and alpha prime is dimension full you can so and it's actually it goes as the its square root of alpha prime goes as the uh, planckian length scale which is the string length 10 to the power minus 33 cm now in the unmodified uncertainty principle when delta x goes to zero delta p can go to infinity and this leads to this led to the divergences in our calculations now if i generalize by uncertainty principle what would happen now when delta x goes to zero delta p would no longer go to infinity some very large value but finite okay so some finite value and therefore these divergences would not be there but as a result of this what would happen my interaction vertices that i mentioned to you in uh, super gravity theory or conventional field theory or super symmetric field theory now the interaction vertices would no longer be zero dimensional but they would be replaced by by vertices spread in space time so that is the fundamental difference of this approach of string theory with the conventional particle physics of any kind and as a result of this what happens now the theory so called string theory or super string theory it becomes super renormalizable no divergences at all because my interaction vertices are no longer zero dimensional they are spread in space time this is the main point this is the main uh crux of the matter for going to string theory and we have included gravity into it by definition why because now we have uh, we have these extended space uh, extended vertices in space time so you can talk about if you like at some later point of time include gravity and everything into it there would be no no extra problems no divergences at all so those all those problems would be gone all right so how do we do about how do we go about it as i said we should always ask ourselves how do we go about it? how do we understand it yes let me consider a 
let me consider a one dimensional string with two open ends these red red are the open ends here if it propagates into space time it sweeps out a imaginary surface which is called as the bird seat however if i have a loop i am sorry i don't have it here but in every morning you get some newspapers wrapped around in a rubber band so that rubber band is a loop so if i if i oh i think i have it here let let me show you in one minute so uh, now now this is a loop if this loop propagates in space time this will sweep out an imaginary surface which would be tube which would be a cylindrical surface a kind of a tube so these are the two possible configurations that i can think of the open string and the so this is called closed string this is called an open string now this we have to somehow construct the action of our theory which can take care of of this modified ideas and this would probably serve our purpose so the well known actions you see the as i said classical theories and classical techniques they are the mother of all theories so you can consider the action in terms of a so you can write down the the action of a relativistic point particle if a point particle moves around in space time it traces out a word line that is what we get a particle is particle relativistic or non relativistic and when a string moves out it sweeps out a bird sheet called as the bird sheet a surface and you can appropriately write down the action of these theories so conventionally or usually you one kind of uh, actions they involve square root they are of the type called nambu goto born in fell nambu goto dirac born in fell nambu goto that you can put in many fields into the into the theory and uh, another form is called as the polyakov actions so they do not involve any square roots they are little bit easier to handle but you as a as a uh, curiosity you can look into both of them i i, I have studied both of them in my different papers uh, so uh, uh, if you look into for example um, papers on this by anybody including myself you can find out there so all these nambu go to dirac Uh, born in fell number and so on all these actions they involve a square root and polyakov actions then gauge fix and so on and so now what you do what is important is that for these actions our classical tricks tell us classical mechanics classical field theory tell us use make use of the variational principle vary the action delta s equal to 0 uh, so using the variational principle you can derive the equations of motion so for equations of motion you can you will you will find here if you have this uh, in uh, one more point is that for the conventional string theory the bosonic string theory uh, you have this ambient space time which is designated by the which is spanned by the string field coordinates which are usually written as capital x mu so it's a mu dimensional space and when a uh, particle or a string moves around in this space time it sweeps out the the imaginary surface so this imaginary surface can be parameterized by let us say sigma alpha uh, uh, which is uh, a function of Uh, uh, space and time sigma and alpha so you call it uh, sigma alpha is a function of sigma and tau so for relativistic point particle it just a function of tau for one dim one d one uh, dimensional brains it's or a string theory this is uh, sigma alpha is a function of sigma and tau for 2d brains you will have sigma 1 sigma 2 and tau for d3 brains sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 bird volume so when a bird sheet travels so this bird sheet coordinates sigma alpha they get embedded into the space time manifold so sig x 
string coordinates are now functions of in field theory we they were functions of x mu so they are now functions of sigma instead of mu i cannot use mu many times so capital x mu the string coordinates are functions of sigma alpha this this would hold true for the bosonic strings if i have super strings i will also have to include fermi fields into my theory and they would let me call it capital psi mu so they would also uh, be mu dimensional in the space time manifold they would also be functions of the uh, string coordinate this the bird seed coordinates so string fields are functions of bird seed coordinates so capital x mu and capital psi mu they are functions of the bird seed coordinates sigma and tau so this is what your uh, basic framework of a string theory now you make use of the variational principle you derive the equations of motion what are you going to get you are going to get the equations of motion so equations of motion would be of the type uh, let us say the klein gordon type klein gordon equation and if you have also fermi fields uh, in your x and then you would also have dirac equations for this so uh, these will be the equations of motion now we know from non relativistic mechanics that the solution of a wave equation you can always split into the left moving waves and right moving waves whenever you need you can split them into left moving and right right moving waves so in string theory they are called left movers and right movers just conventional we can call them anything so you get the you can split x mu and capital x mu and capital psi mu which are string field coordinates into the left movers and right movers okay so uh, left movers and right movers function of if a if a simple wave uh, in, in in simple mechanics a fun f uh, you write the differential equation for f or the wave equation so it will be f of vt minus x and vt plus x f of vt plus x so moving left and right now in string theory you can do the same thing you can after having studied your different actions obtaining their equations of motion using variational principles now you can wherever needed for example for closed string you have to have definitely left movers and right movers going clockwise and anti clockwise now you also look into the theory of partial differential equations uh, and the solutions of partial differential equations can always be expressed as fourier expansions that is what we did in one dimensional uh, harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics that is what we can do or we did for scalar field vector field spinner field in conventional field theory and the same thing we would need to do also in the string theory so in string theory also we would need to make fourier expansions they are called fock space decompositions even here and even there fock space is a space where the diagonal elements are non zero and non diagonal elements are zero so take example the best thing to learn all these things master all these things for me has always been one dimensional harmonic oscillator if you look into my Uh, video lectures on string theory or in on super string theory on my my youtube channel as i said you can locate my youtube channel by writing my full name so th there are many lectures which i gave at the university of oldenburg uh, in my early days when i taught there were no no possibility of video lectures <laughs> so it was a loss to the younger generation so uh, here you can find that so i always start whether it's super string theory i always start with one dimensional harmonic oscillator construct things states uh, as i as i said uh, n particle states going back to vacuum state and so on using one dimensional harmonic oscillator then apply it and extend it to simple scalar field theory so here the annihilation and creation operators uh, are still simpler 
but if you would talk about uh, vector field like electromagnetic field then you will have to introduce polarizations if you want to talk about spinner field of course uh, the annulus and creation operators uh, are independent of that but as coefficients you would also have the spinners in uh, dirac spinner field for example or vector field so the, but they are very doable things uh, and 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 um, i would recommend simple books like louis rider and uh, mendel and so they are the simplest book and of course my great friend ashok das his lectures notes on quantum field theory and his lecture notes on um, uh, field theory from path integral approach to field theory is very, very very famous path integral he is a professor at rochester university and one of the simplest guy very very knowledgeable to talk to him all vedas upanishads whatever you like you can invite him to your to your place when he to your institutes and he is a simple person very very simple very rich in knowledge you see uh so uh, he comes from a place called bhadrak in orissa very very great soul very rich in knowledge so you see you talk about the creation and annihilation operators you talk about the scalar field vector field spinner field you talk about this and then you also say always that okay we make fock space decomposition which means uh, by construction we we we, we generate our uh, bisnu the preserver a dagger times a uh, to be a, a diagonal matrix okay non diagonal components are zero that is the beauty about it so you can also make fock space decomposition not just on par with field theory fock space decomposition for scalar vector and spinner field now you do it for string fields so the bosonic string fields as well as the fermionic string fields okay and you have to obey the laws of simple laws of physics which go by common sense right so the the creation and annihilation operators in fermionic case they would have to obey anti commutation relations okay and so you can read from mendel and so you can read from ashok das things are very beautifully explained but even in my video lectures i have explained these things sufficiently well any elementary any person with a simple masters degree or even undergraduate degree can follow my lectures so don't throw them away but just by the name oh super string you know I, you know it is too difficult i leave it no everything is simple you have to do it if you read it's simple okay everything is doable otherwise why would anybody else do if they were undoable and then if dsk can do it you can too do it you too can do it but even better than me <laughs> you see so that is the idea so here and then you construct the mass spectrum of the theory exactly the same way that you do in field theory that you do in uh, one dimensional harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics you do the same thing with a scalar field vector field spinner field in field theory in a four dimensional field theory now you have to do the same algebra same techniques used in string field theory now uh, what happens the results are very encouraging very beautiful you see uh, i am working within the framework of finishing concluding my talk in one hour or so so you see here the different particles are different vibrational modes of a string that is what you have to this uh, creation and operation on uh, creation and annihilation operators that you now talk in string theory they they talk exactly about this they give you uh, a handle on all these things so uh, now uh, i mean you consider the uh, different vibrational modes of a string so they are just like different musical notes sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa and the string is like it is stretched a string okay like that of a guitar a string or a violin string okay uh, things are not doable because mathematics i am telling you in a very simple manner the concepts are rich but they can be understood through simple mathematics and those who want to to learn little bit further uh, are encouraged to go to my my 
uh, video lectures one by one slowly and you will find oh whatever i was talking here it is same thing there and then because i have more time in, in germany there is a culture of two hours teaching per per class two hours teaching so 90 minutes concrete teaching for 90 minutes so my each lecture goes over 90 plus minutes i usually take few more minutes so it goes from 90 to 100 minutes okay so uh, and then too many lectures so you can do things little bit slowly here i am giving you a summary and overview of what you can do what is string theory what you can do and this is the i i personally being a teacher i am more of a teacher so i tell you practical steps i am i am a simple a small guy where people talk many big great things but uh, i tell you the tricks techniques of learning it how to learn it how to do it how to go about it this is what you will find in my all my talks i tell how to do it classroom teaching i love to do and love to teach so you can construct the uh, mass spectrum of these theories bosonic string theory fermionic string theory or the super string theory where you have bosons as well as fermions and so you can calculate the mass operator is it it actually goes over several lectures but the concluding result would be the mass squared operator when applied to a, to a state what you obtain the the mass spectrum for a open string theory the ground state is a tachyonic state what is a tachyonic state here mass squared operator is negative so the mass is imaginary such is such a state is called as a tachyonic state so ground state of a open string theory is tachyonic actually the same also holds to the ground state of a closed string okay a closed string also the ground state is a uh, is a tachyonic state with mass squared operator as negative negative mass squared operator so this is one thing but the first excited state first excited state in uh, open string theory is a vector like state which means a photon like state vector particle is a photon photon is a vector particle okay so a photon like state the first excited state of a open string theory what about the first excited and uh, first excited states of a closed string theory ground the the first excited state is is tachyonic so it's unphysical okay unphysical with negative mass squared or imaginary mass but the first excited state of a closed string is a tensor state what is a tensor state g mu this is graviton state so the ground state of your uh, no the first excited state of your string theory of your of your closed string theory is is uh, contains the first excited state contains a graviton with a spin plus 2 and it also contains a an antisymmetric two form gauge field called b alpha beta or by whatever name you like to call it but antisymmetric two form gauge field and you have uh, a, a scalar dilaton field so these are the three things that you get in the uh, simple uh, you can even obtain it qualitatively you don't have to go to the quantitative estimates you can go to qualitative things you you will find that these things you encounter in the mass spectrum of the open and closed string theory now in the fermionic string or the super string you also have fermi fields and the wave i might take a couple of minutes to tell you how to how to introduce that thing so coming back to the so called best you know model if i uh, drop my uh, pseudo scalar field i just have a scalar field and i replace that scalar field with capital of x mu the 
string coordinates, bosonic string coordinates. So that could be my first term. You see, one half d mu phi d mu phi. So phi replace phi by um, capital of x mu, the string coordinates. X mu in turn is a function of sigma alpha, sigma and tau. Okay, so you are working in a string theory. And plus an additional term, which is capital of psi mu, which are, uh, which are uh, fermionic coordinates. They are psi of mu. They are also functions of sigma and tau. Now, while doing string theory, so replace the Grassmann, uh, the spinner field in your best you know, model by this. If you look at this book of uh, my friend, Professor Harald Mirror Christen, he has, he has devoted several chapters and pages on the best Jumino model, which you can learn all different things, taking example of best Jumino model, also constructing it, it in super space and super field formalism, also staying in the conventional uh, approach where the supersymmetry is non-manifest. You see, for discovering these things in string theory, it, it took decades. And those people, one of them is a, uh, is a great friend of mine in Ecole uh, Polytechnic. No, no. Uh, school Superior in, oh, I'm forgetting, Jarve, Monsieur Jarve. He, he has been to India. I took him to show him Bitur, the Ganges in, from IIT Kanpur, uh, long, long ago, with some very, very well-known other scientists, uh, Venetiano and other people were there. So uh, the organi I was too young at that time. They told me, Kulsesh, why don't you take these guys to uh, show Bitur in, in Kanpur? So he invited me to his... Equal normal superior, yes. Equal normal superior. I was there once in, on, 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 when you go to Saint-Salisé to Jardin de Luxembourg, you can walk. And on one side, you come across this equal normal superior. And Mr. Jarve. Jarve and Sakita, they found these super symmetry, super symmetric transformations of this uh, string theory. Uh, they are famous for that. And, uh, Gel fund or what I have forgotten another name, very famous name, who independently dis discovered these uh, transformations. But you also um, later on I learned that they were also discovered. I mean they were perhaps known much earlier in the context of Bayesian model. So these are, and here in the context of Bayesian model, the same thing also for string theory, super string theory. The transformation parameter is a constant Grassmann variable. It's not a field. Because it's not local symmetry. It's rigid supersymmetry or global supersymmetry. So here, now, after you include uh, supersymmetry into the theory and the fermion, fermions, automatically you come across supersymmetry. You cannot do it without that. So now you again find the mass spectrum of the theory. Then in superstring theory, there are two ways of taking the boundary, implementing the boundary conditions. One of them is called as the Raymond sector and one of them is called as the Nebusat sector. So mass spectrum, then you obtain of a superstring theory. In the Raymond sector, you, may, you come across space-time fermions, okay, like electrons and quarks and so on. But when you do Nebuchadnezzar sector, the, you end up with the mass spectrum in the um, bosonic space-time. So Raymond sector gives you uh, mass spectrum in the, in the fermion sector, uh, space-time fermions, you end up with space-time fermions. And in Nebuchadnezzar sector, you end up with space-time bosons. So the, mass spectrum is very rich and in fact if you look into more uh, of these uh, papers there are many many experts even in India India Asokshan is the well-known name for uh, he is known by the name of string theory or super string theory <laughs> nobody can beat him till date and uh, Sunil Mukhi also a great friend of mine the 
at Tata Institute. Now he has, I think, shifted to Pune. He is a great speaker. He is a great teacher. Now Ashok Sen has also developed into a great teacher. Originally, he was uh, uh, Sunil Mukhi was always leading the teaching part. <laughs> very, very vocal, versatile man. So uh, I would recommend you to look at some of the work of these guys, Ashok Sen and Sunil Mukhi. There used to be one friend of mine. Uh, he is there in uh, Bhuvaneswar, uh, Gyan Maharana. Very knowledge and very good teacher. And I personally learned many things from Gyan Maharana from Bhuvaneswar. And uh, now, well, of course, there are many, many more theorists who would tell you uh, much more than what I know. Uh, they do hardcore uh, physics. I no longer do that much hard work. So uh, I am only doing soft work. <laughs> if you like to call it soft work. You know, I, I cannot do that much hard work now anymore. So I do soft work like talking to you people or talking to my students. So the here you can obtain all these, uh, all these uh, mass spectrum of the string theory. Different vibrational states, they are, they correspond to distinct particles. Okay. And you can characterize them by different quantum numbers like spin, mass, and so on. And uh, I think a lot of progress has been done. I can't even summarize it into this lecture. But you please have a look into the uh, achievements of many of our own Indian people in this, in this field. You don't have to worry too much. We have many, many leading theorists string theories in our country, many leading field theories in our country, you look into that and you will know many more. But So making contact with experimental observational physics is now the main challenge before the string theories. Because you started off with one dimensional objects, open or closed string, and now but you have to eventually face the experiments, the observational physics. And therefore, you have to make certain reductions from going to, because consistent uh, bosonic string theories are defined in D equal to 26 dimensions. And consistent uh, uh, superstring theories are defined in D equal to 10 dimensions. You see, because of the different requirements of central charge has to be zero and no ghost condition and so on and so forth. So, these are, uh, these are uh, you have to work within those limits. And then you can obtain meaningful mass spectrum by the, by the present times. Uh, we have already uh, made a lot of progress. And then some other people, there is one guy, my great friend, Samir Mathur at Ohio State University. He, his uh, expertise is in gravity and string theory and black hole physics. And uh, he is the one who is credited with solving the black hole information paradox. The information, the, the black holes, they also die away eventually. They are not eternal. So the information in the radiation, thermal radiation, uh, might get lost. And then we would end up uh, that losing the information as to what once made a black hole. So you look into the work of Samir Mathur of obtaining, uh, resolving this paradox within the framework of string theory. And he comes to India very often. His parents, uh, I think now, may not be there. I have met his father a couple of times. Uh, but he comes and lives in New Delhi. His sister lives here. So he is a frequent visitor to India and uh, also, to, also to Delhi for family reasons. And for he has given several, all these guys, they have given several talks in our uh, Department of Physics and Astrophysics, Delhi University. And... Uh, so there are lots of achievements, I mean, mainly also from our own Indian people. And so within the, so black hole physics, within the string theory, uh, you are able to solve many black, black, black hole uh, information paradox, thermodynamics of black holes, and many other things. So uh, one can achieve all these things. and 
uh, I can see that I have been speaking for uh, 65 minutes now. So I gradually conclude. So you see, uh, this is a bottom up approach and bottom down approach. You can go from conventional field theory to uh, supergravity theory to superstring theory. And this is one way string, uh, going up and further is beginning from string or superstring theory, you come down to supergravity theory, you come down to uh, conventional standard model physics. To make the, the aim is the same, you try to make contact with the observational physics, with the experimental physics, how best you can do in, in what method, what approach, uh, which ladders you are supposed to take, you have to carefully decide. But have an overview on both the sides, going from this way to this way and going from this way to this way. So remember that string theory holds true at the Planckian scales, where mass is uh, 10 to the power 19 GeV. The length scale is 10 to the power minus 33 centimeters. The time scale is 10 to the power minus 43 to minus 44 seconds and so on. And conventional standard model holds true at the conventional energy that one of you just mentioned, the experiment at CERN. So, uh, I mean, they are accessible energies at the moment for us, what, is, what we can practically do. So, these are the things. So, either you uh, have to extend in your super string, in your super gravity theory, you have to somehow extend the zero dimensional vertices to vertices spread in space time, like in string theory, or in string theory you have to make the reductions from high energy to low energy side, okay. So the, the idea is to meet the experiment somehow and make sense out of whatever we are trying to do, but, but we have many, many brave souls. Uh, also in our country, not to talk of the whole world, but also around the whole globe. So, a uh, lot of new physics has come out. In, in, in black hole thermodynamics, a lot of things have been explained by string theory. Similarly, I mean, many, many things have been resolved. I would not be even able to count them. So, but uh, for me as a teacher, I find it a beautiful approach. What is the harm? I can develop field theory of one zero dimensional particles and fields. I can develop field theory of one dimensional objects. I can go uh, from here to there or from there to here. And the mathematics, doable mathematics is doable and very, very simple. Anybody who has little more interest, please do look. But be, because in my uh, video lectures, I also always recap simple things of quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, uh, their correspondence and the simple uh, examples in uh, quantum field theory. When I, I, I gave, I mean, two and a half decades I taught field theory one and field theory two in, in Delhi University. But uh, unfortunately those, those uh, lectures and talks were not recorded. The last uh, course that I gave was on quantum mechanics that some students recorded and they are now available on my YouTube channel. So uh, after that, in the last few years, I became little bit uh, conscious about it. That after all, uh, younger generation they do look at you. So my, if you look at into my YouTube channel, they are uh, 1,500 subscribers, and uh, uh, the uh, mo the more views, something like 60,000 views of all these different lectures. And uh, I might advertise one more lecture of mine that I gave one year ago on the TED platform or TEDx platform you know, that is uh, looking for a theory of quantum gravity. It's a 19 minutes talk. You might, for that, it's not on my YouTube channel. You have to write separately my name and TDX or TD, TDX or uh, TED, TEDx or something. So it's a, it's a so uh, you will not be bored because it's only a 19 minutes talk where I summarize some of these some of these thoughts that we have been talking in the last two hours. And uh, but I always talk about simple things. Also in my classroom teaching, I do step by step. If you look into my lectures, you will find that I give each and every step. I write, I prefer uh, 
uh, chalk and talk method. Today I am not using chalk and talk method because I have no uh, such arrangement at my home. And uh, I am not showing you slides because then um, um, it, it's too much work for writing all these things, collecting in a particular order, then the ordering keeps changing every day. So I prefer, I, I depend more on my brains and I am dictated continuously when I speak to you in my conversation, I am always dictated with my... Actually, I, I minimized looking at slides and so on long, long ago. Because earlier, but I was showing a few slides, but uh, I found that it was much easier to rely on the brains rather than the other platforms. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I uh, offer my apologies to you for being, uh, for not being able to tell you many things and show you some equations or uh, there are no diagrams. Well, if you have, if I get a time at some point of time with some of you or all of you, then I would have shown you in my super gravity uh, understanding, I could show you several Feynman diagrams like if you, you can consider the bending of sunlight, okay, under gravity. So sunlight means, so if you look into my, and I always relate it, my class, relate things with classroom teaching. Look at the book by Mendel and so my, it's like a Bible, it's, it's, it's not so easy, but you learn it, learn it, and then you, oh, it's very simple. So there somewhere in eight, chapter 8 or something, it, it talks about, uh, this uh, classical photon coming out of a nucleus and it interacts with a electron or a photon and uh, they they uh, give you some observable thing that is called Bram Strahlung I suppose. So in, in gravity theory, super gravity theory, uh, sunlight is uh, coming. So what is sunlight? Sunlight is my photon is coming from the uh, from the sun, okay, which means from some nucleus, okay for me. So it's a classical photon and it can interact with a gluon. Gluon couples with everything. So it can interact with gluon. Then the gluon is propagating. It absorbs a classical photon coming from the sun and then this gluon can split into a pair of uh, two photons or it can split into a pair of electron positron which can combine maybe at two different places. So at one end you get a uh, one loop, quantum loop, quantum corrections to this process. See, so the quantum corrections to various processes, they are measurable. They are, uh, I mean, they are calculable, but their, uh, but their net amount is very tiny. So the point is, they are doable, they are correct, but how to uh, go to these experiments which can detect these small, uh, these small transition amplitudes. This is a small transition because of the, if the graviton is involved or gravity is involved, the transition amplitude cannot be comparable to that of strong interaction processes and so on. But my message is uh, most of the things are doable, are calculable. The contribution net result of the transition amplitudes is uh, too tiny and making contact with experiment becomes too difficult. So here you can do these calculations also including gravity you now and so on. Uh, well, in, in my video lectures, perhaps there is one talk which I gave one year or two years in the last one or two years uh, where my friend Stan Brodsky was also, this is, there is a seminar series of seminars, London, London Oldenburg seminar series. I gave one talk on supergravity in that and because some people when uh, asked about making contacts with supersymmetry, Stan himself was available to explain uh, how to make contact with supersymmetry in the hadron physics, which is of course experimental physics, doable in the lab. Okay, and I remember when at the time of my talk, it was very early in the morning, at 6 o'clock in Palo Alto, where he lives in, in California. But for a friend like uh, Daya Sankar, he calls me Daya. He got up, he was after his shower and so on, he was sitting fresh at 6 o'clock of Palo Alto <laughs> to listen my talk on supergravity. 
सो आई थिंक लेट मी एक्सप्रेस माई हार्ट फेल्ट थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर टॉलरेटिंग मी फॉर दिस मोर देन टू आवर्स नाउ इन माई टू टॉक्स एंड आई अपोलोजाइज फॉर मैनी ऑफ माई शॉर्ट कमिंग्स आई मे हैव मेड बिकॉज आई एम नॉट लुकिंग एट एनी स्लाइड्स और एक्सेप्ट दैट आई लुक डैट माई संस्कृत श्लोक आज बिकॉज आई डेंट आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू कन्वे यू रॉन्ग थिंग्स सो फॉर फॉर मेकिंग श्योर दैट आई स्पोक करेक्टली सो बट बट प्लीज डू लुक इन टू डोंट इग्नोर दैम डोंट लुक एट माई फादर टोल्ड मी बाई लाइव एज ए स्मॉल चाइल्ड डोंट लुक एट रामायण एंड गीता एज रिलीजियस बुक्स सो दे आई हैव आई हैव ए स्मॉल बुक ऑन दिस इज लाइंग ऑन माई डेस्क ऑल द टाइम इन बुक्स आई आई डोंट केयर वेदर आई हैव टेकन बाथ और वाट एवर नो दिस इज नॉट ए थिंग ऑफ पूजा हाथ जोड़ना नहीं इट्स ए थिंग यू नीड टू रीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द सेम अप्लाइज फॉर मी ऑल्सो टू रामचरित मानस आई आई ट्राइड मैनी टाइम्स लर्निंग फ्रॉम वाल्मीकि महेश वाल्मीकि एंड इट्स वेरी हैवी बुक्स टू वॉल्यूम्स एंड बट इट्स संस्कृत एंड हिंदी ट्रांसलेशन बिकॉज माई संस्कृत इज वेरी पुअर बट आई आई मेक एफर्ट्स एंड आई वुड एनकरेज ऑल ऑफ यू टू डू दैट यू सी संस्कृत इज ए वेरी रिच लैंग्वेज एंड एज द पीपुल से देव भाषा ये देव भाषा है देवताओं की भाषा है माने एंशियंट लैंग्वेज है देखो सो वी शुड नॉट एबन डोन इट इफ ए वेस्टर्न पर्सन टेल्स दिस इज करेक्ट देन वी शो या बीबर फुल्स वी डेंट नो दिस नो यू लुक इन टू योर थिंग आर्यभट्टा ब्रह्म गुप्ता ग्रेट पीपल बी हैड ऑल दिस इन इन दे हैव डिस्कवर्ड मैनी थिंग दे हैव रिटर्न मैनी थिंग्स वी नीड टू लर्न सो विद दैट आई एक्सप्रेस माई थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू वंस अगेन and i i leave the platform to the organizers if you still like you have energy to ask i i i'm full of energy as you can see on my face when i talk on behalf uh, on behalf of uh, all the participants i really thank you for such a profound such an interesting and motivating lecture so like i told you i am a social scientist oh, but great. for the past half an hour past half an hour i've been reading up on my phone about super string theory and oh my goodness <laughs> i was so fascinated i have studied physics only till class 12 but i've been reading about oh. super symmetry for the past half an hour so that is how motivating you are the, sir divya ji divya ji i i am thoroughly impressed and thoroughly inspired by your these statements that you were looking so at and i'm just resolving that i'm going to hear your tedx talk today evening <laughs> so that i can learn something about what you were saying so we really are very grateful to you uh, i, I think that I that's a good compliment to me that if <laughs> if uh, people social scientists also get some motivation uh, i can imagine <laughs> i 80 people they are very simple people usually divya ji in in our physics stream and in general in science stream people are very simple and humble people it's not that they do not know they know a lot but they are very simple <laughs> they are very modest yes, people yes sir scientists always are and scientists and uh, i am very so sure many of them must be feeling excited and thrilled and for that reason i like to tell the basic references i again repeat in one minute please look at my video lectures on various things whatever is available there i have to upload many more that are with me Uh, on my youtube channel and look at the basic book for example supersymmetry book by harald miller kristen you will also look into his text books on classical mechanics quantum mechanics 1000 page quantum mechanics when uh, 550 copies somebody uh, uh, somebody booked from america he was so excited he wrote me the mail uh, uh, oh professor kulsit sir can you can you believe it in ban go they order 550 copies of my book I think you have written each and every step there. So look into his classical quantum electrodynamics book is extremely good. Uh, many people do not know how to calculate the metric. Your in in your Lorentz transformation in first year we read in the component form. So four equations: uh, x goes to x prime, x prime equal to so so and so, y prime, z prime, t prime. But when you write them in the covariant form, x mu goes to x prime mu equal to a mu nu times Uh, x new and he tells exactly that this matrix can be calculated in terms of a simple matrix involving partial derivatives of primed with unprimed coordinates one of them for for relativistic and one of them for i mean uh, stationary 
framework. So uh, even a, a great book like uh, David Jackson, I visited him once. He invited me to Berkeley. Uh, he also simply says, now we can simply guess that, that this matrix will be this. And many of uh, people teach it like that. I tell them, no, there is no jantar mantar. You just uh, know everything has to be has to come out of some mathematics. The concepts have to be related to uh, mathematics. Mathematics has to be related to concepts. Otherwise, the beauty would be lost. And so this is what I, I spend my lifetime trying to do these little things, marrying concepts with mathematics and mathematics with concepts. This is my one of my... Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We are really thank motivated. Thank you. And thank I'm you. impressed they are thank all motivated, I hope, no. to follow in your footsteps and dedicate themselves to no. this kind of science and to uh, no. teaching science well. So thank you, Professor Kulshesh. And we no. are indeed blessed that you were here with I'm, us I'm, today. I'm thoroughly, yeah. I'm thoroughly grateful to you. I'm thoroughly excited and impressed and inspired with the interest that I have already seen. Uh, and we, we, I, I suppose we still meet on Friday uh, yes, sir. Afternoon. Yes, sir. We meet again, sir. We are going to meet again, sir, and we look forward to it. So we wish you a very good evening. Take okay. care, sir. All our good wishes and regards, sir. Okay. Namaskar, sir, and bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir. My bye -bye, lots of love sir. to all of you. My lots of bye thanks bye, and sir. love to all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, thank you so very much. much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So with this, we conclude today's proceedings. We are ending today's session. Now you will... Please, uh, we are ending for the day. We'll meet again tomorrow morning at 10.05, five minutes past 10. Please be Thank punctual. You, again, I'm reminding you about being punctual. That is all. Please, we'll meet again. The, uh, the, the Biaji, I would be very grateful to you if you could send me a, a list of the email addresses or contact addresses of these participants, whatever is available yes, with sir. you. Because yes, sir, I, will send you. I, will send I, I also you. have a curiosity to know the persons with whom I have been talking. So yes, sir. I it, will do that, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. My 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 Gmail is very simple. Dayasankar dot kulsresta at gmail dot com. All small right, letters. Dayasankar yes, sir, we, I, I will be sending it, sir. I thank will be sending so it, sir. Thank you so bye much. Bye bye, sir. Thank bye, you, sir. Bye, so participants, bye bye. Take care. We'll meet again tomorrow morning, ten o five. All right. And we, uh, we will thank share you. tomorrow's schedule on your WhatsApp group. And uh, the day officer tomorrow, I think we have, uh, let me just check. Tomorrow we have uh, Manjulata Yadav as the day officer. Yes. And uh, tomorrow Amit Uke will be writing tomorrow's report. Aaj ki report Amandeep Singh ji ne likhni thi. Amandeep, you have to write today's report. And please submit it all in the WhatsApp group. So Amandeep ji, aapne aaj ki report likhni hai. Kal savere tak aap isko submit karenge. Tomorrow... Manjulata, you are the day officer and Amit Uke is the reporter tomorrow. So with this, bye-bye. Bye bye. If, you, if, you, if you do not mind, please include my phone number in your WhatsApp group. I'll do that, sir. Definitely, <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I will do that, sir. We'll make you Just part of Just for my group. curiosity purposes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. sir. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Bye-bye. So, bye-bye. Thank you.